Hi, my name is Aaron Ross, and I'm pleased to welcome you to this free series of video tutorials on 3DS Max. Over the course of the next two hours, you'll become familiar with essential polygon modeling tools. Although you're not expected to have any previous modeling experience, by the time we're finished, you will be able to create a professional quality prop suitable for placement in a film, game, or design visualization. In this project, we model a wooden restaurant chair, inspired by an example from the real world. We construct all the parts using different techniques, then combine the pieces and apply simple materials. Some of the learning outcomes from this exercise include project folders and scene layout, editable spline, extrude and sweep, editable poly, loft compound object, and basic materials. We assume that you already know the basics of 3ds Max, its interface, and key terms such as transforms and modifiers. If not, then you'll want to prepare for the lesson by watching my free video series on 3ds Max basics. So let's have some fun modeling in 3ds Max. Before we really begin modeling our chair, I'd like to set the 3ds Max interface to be a little bit simpler for teaching purposes. What we're looking at is the 3ds Max Design 2010 interface with the default preferences. I'm going to set this up to be a little bit simplified because we're not going to use all of the advanced new tools. For example, the graphite modeling tools are out of scope for this exercise. But we can take this opportunity to learn how to switch between custom user interface and defaults. Okay, so here you go custom UI and defaults switcher. This opens a dialog box that lets you choose presets. For example, on the left here, you've got presets for the tool options. For example, if you create a light, will it cast one type of shadow or another? That's what these settings let you do. For game or film work, you're going to probably leave it at max. And if you're doing advanced design visualization, then you might choose one of these other options. On the other side is the skin of the interface. What does it look like on the surface? And I'm actually recommending to new users to choose the AME Light option here. That stands for Autodesk Media and Entertainment. It is a little bit old fashioned, but it does ensure maximum compatibility with other versions of 3ds Max. A couple other things I'm going to do. In fact, I've actually created my own custom user interface scheme. And there isn't time in this lesson to learn about creating user interface schemes, but it's actually pretty easy. So I'm opening up the one that I've previously built. It's a bit lighter. And we have a little bit better highlighting on things so we can see a bit better. Cool, so that's how you change your user interface and defaults. I'm going to also just turn a few other little features off to simplify things. For example, the graphite toolbar itself is here. Graphite modeling tools. I'm going to disable that. I'm going to go into the views menu and I'm also going to turn off the view cube. And finally, since I'm not doing animation, I'm going to turn off the track bar and that's in the customize show UI menu. There we go. Now we've got a very clear interface for just modeling. Okay, so when we start a new scene in 3ds Max, we also want to start a new project folder. Project folders are a way for 3ds Max to keep track of links between a bunch of different files. The 3ds Max.max scene file is not the only file. You also have texture files, like for example, images placed onto surfaces. So you have to track all of this stuff in some kind of rational fashion. The easiest way is through the so-called project folders. Okay, in order for project folders to really work, you're also going to need to change an option in the customize preferences. I'm going to go in there and go to the files tab and enable this switch that says convert local file paths to relative. Okay, I'm, I'm setting this up in advance so that when I actually do some textures on surfaces, the file pass will work correctly. 
Now we're ready to create our project folder. What does a project folder look like? Well, if you go into your home directory in Windows, you will see a folder called 3ds Max. So on Windows XP, it's in My Documents. And inside that 3ds Max folder, you will see a bunch of subfolders. And these are all special folders that 3ds Max uses for very specific purposes. For example, Render Output is where 3ds Max will save images to. Scenes is where you're supposed to put your .max scene files for your scene geometry. So this once again is the default project folder. So I recommend that you create a personal project folder for each model that you create or each client or project that you have. I've already created a space for that on another drive. So here I've got a file path to my new project folder. Okay, I'm gonna create it within Windows. So I can right click and say new folder. And I'll call this one 3DS Max Project. I like to call it out that specifically because this isn't just any old folder. This is a very special folder where 3DS Max is going to track assets. So I'm going to hit the enter key and now I've got a new project folder. I'll go back to 3DS Max and I can just do the alt tab trick on Windows until I get back to my application. Now we're ready to create the project folder structure within 3ds Max. In Max 2010, we now have the caption bar up here and the application button for access to the old file menu. In earlier versions of the software, you would go to file set project folder. Now we've got to go through this manage set project folder. Okay, when I click on that, I get a dialog asking me to browse for the folder. I'm going to click OK. And when I do that, then two things have happened. First, the folder structure has been created in the place that I specified. And second, now 3ds Max is looking at that project folder in order to load assets. Now let's take a look at the project folder structure that 3ds Max just created. I'll minimize the application and go back to Windows Explorer. And inside my 3ds Max project folder that I manually created, you'll see all the appropriate subfolders for all the different types of data that 3ds Max has to track. Now I can extend this, I can add folders in here, as long as I don't delete anything that's existing here, I can extend the capabilities just by creating a new folder. And I'm gonna call this reference because what I need here is a library of imagery that will inform my modeling process. And in fact, I've already collected some images, and I'm pretty happy with this design from Holsog Canada. So I'm going to copy those files and paste them into my new custom reference folder in my project. Cool, now I can view these images either in Windows or in 3ds Max.